Hi friends, welcome back to Rustic and Lace DIY. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much. I appreciate all of you so very much and I am so grateful that you are here with me every week. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Brenda and this is Oliver and we are so happy to have you as well. Today I am doing something completely different, something I've never done before. I have been so busy the last week and a half putting out a whole bunch of videos that I really needed a break. So. I decided to put together a video that shows my top 10 favorite DIYs from this fall. So in this video, a couple things to note. Number one is the um, DIY number that comes up with the picture of the item that I'm going to do is not in sequential order. That is from my previous video. So make, pay attention to the one before that picture. That makes sense. I hope so. Anyways. Um, I really appreciate you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And with all that being said, let's get to crafting. Okay, here's DIY number one, not three. <laughs> so I started off with my Waverly chalk paint in the color Cashew. This little wooden leaf from Hobby Lobby, some letters I got from Dollar Tree, this wood sign from Dollar Tree, and that scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. So I'm going to start off with scoring the bottom part of that sign. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to have this on my tear tray. And it was a little too tall to fit in my tear tray, so I just kind of measured it out a little bit. And then I'm taking my um, box cutter there and I am just scoring it until it actually comes off. And I think I do end up doing a couple of scores on the back. Now this probably wouldn't have taken so long had I changed out the blade on my box cutter because it was getting dull by then. <clears throat> so I have recently had my husband change it out for me and it works much better. <clears throat> So once it was done, I went ahead and coated it with my cashew color. I did have to do, I think, two or three coats just to make sure you didn't see the words. I think it was just two coats. Um, and then once that was done, I painted the F and the L's with my Waverly chalk paint in the color moss. Then I am taking that scrapbook paper and I am just using my finger to score it right on the edge of the sign so that way I know where to cut it. And once I had it all cut out, I took a glue stick and I'm just layering the back of that paper with that glue. And then I am just adding it onto that sign. And then once it's all on there, I do trim it down to make sure that it, it fits evenly. Then after that, I take my hot glue gun and I am um, gluing those letters in place and then I realized oh I better put them all down so that I make sure that they're on there evenly so I'm just as you can see using that wooden leaf um, as the A and I love that leaf um, it comes in a box I have like maybe 20 leaves something like that they're different shapes and colors and I love them they come in handy for a lot of things so once I had them all on there, I knew I wanted it to stand. So I take a couple of tumbling tower blocks and I'm just going to hot glue them onto the back of that sign, making sure that the edge of them is even with the edge of the sign. And then I realized it still didn't want to stand with just those two so I'm going to take another block and I'm just going to hot glue that on to the back of both of those just like you see there there and then I took some raffia that I got from um, Dollar Tree and I just made a small little bow and I added that to the top and that's all there was for that and I just think it came out so pretty I love those colors together and they just blend together so well you'll have to let me know what you think about DIY number one in the comment box below okay so this is DIY number two 
Okay, so I used this sign that I got from the Dollar Tree and I used this paper that I bought from Hobby Lobby, some Sola Wood flowers. I will have a link for them in my link tree in the description box below. This other little Halloween sign I got from the Dollar Tree as well. And then I printed out this saying on my Cricut. And so I'm gonna start off here by just removing the back from that picture frame. And once it's removed, I tried to take that off. I thought it was just a picture glued on, but it's not, it's like painted. I know it was really stuck on there. So I decided, okay, I'm just gonna take off that flower. So I took it off, but it did leave a little bit there. So I used my little scraper to scrape it off. Then I'm just going to trim this paper down to fit that um, backing and then once that was done I use my hot glue and I'm going to glue that on. Now you can use whatever you want. You can use Mod Podge, you can probably use a glue stick, super glue, whatever you like. <laughs> then I just add it to back to that frame. Then once I was done with that I'm just cutting off the, actually I was going to cut off the tie and I thought no I might be able to use that for something later. So I just untied it and then I sanded off all of that glitter because I have learned that if you don't, you end up getting glitter in your paint and all over the place. So I painted it there with my Cashew in Waverly uh, chalk paint and now I'm taking my Antique Wax by Waverly and I am just dry brushing it. And I am sorry I did not show you um, where I uh, adhered the fall is in the air. I think I was having a lot of difficulties with that that day or I just forgot to hit record one or the other <laughs> so here after that was on my sign I'm just using that antique wax to go around and doing some dry brush around the edge and even just around the middle part of that <sighs> I don't know what that is I Sorry about that guys, that was before I distressed it. <laughs> Anyways, I'm taking some of these little glue um, dots and I am adding one to the back of that sign because I wanted it to come out of the sign a little bit. And then I am just gluing it right there in place. Then I took some of these solo wood flowers and I am just going to um, put them along the bottom edge of that picture uh, frame. And I love these flowers, you guys. If you haven't tried them, um, check them out. They are always are having good sales on them. And uh, I just think they're beautiful. You can get them already colored. You can get them raw to where you color them the, yourselves. Um, there's just, they're just beautiful. They're amazing. And I haven't tried dyeing them yet. I did get some dye this last time I ordered some. Um, I will be trying that soon in an, another video and I will sh show you guys how to do that. But their instructions, they have videos on how to do it so they make it really easy. So the link will be in my link tree in the description box. I do get a little bit of a commission if you order through that link. So if you're interested in getting some, I would love it if you ordered it through my link. Okay, so once I have those all in place, I decided to make a bow, of course it needs a bow. Um, I think I'm gonna do a double bow here. So I take this ribbon, I think I got this ribbon at Hobby Lobby actually. Um, and I just do the awareness sign and then I just pinch the middle together and you just, for some reason I can't do it the other way, I always have to flip it around. <laughs> so once you have it all pinched nicely in together, then I'm gonna take a twist tie and I wrap it around the middle. Now you can use a twist tie, you can use a Chanel stem, you could use um, a zip tie, there's a lot of things you can use. Or you can even use like jute string. Then I made a second little bow with some ribbon. I believe I got that from Dollar Tree and I am adding that. And then I am tying a piece of twine around it and wrap it around and then I just tie it in the back. And then of course, gotta dovetail those ends, gotta make it look finished. But if you don't like the dovetail, you don't have to do it if you're gonna recreate this. Make it your own. 
So once I had my bow all ready, I just went in and hot glued it to the top and then I added another one of those flowers in between the bow and there it is. And I think it's a beautiful, it's adorable. I just love that paper. I love those flowers and I love the way it looks on my shelves. Okay, here's DIY number three. Oh my goodness, you guys, I love this. And I know a lot of you have loved this one too. I started out with some one gallon paint stir sticks that um, Sunflower from Dollar Tree and a saying I printed off of my Cricut. So I started off by putting three, four, five, I think there's seven of those um, all together and laying them flat. I was turning them over because one side has like, um, let numbers on them the like a measuring stick on it and then once I had them I had these extra tops of the five gallon paint stir sticks so I'm just going around and hot gluing them to the back so that it's all attached together now if you don't have those you can always use jumbo craft sticks or any craft sticks really um, to adhere to put on the back of that to keep them all together and one of the other things that I did grab for this uh, DIY is I had part of a, another part of a five gallon stir stick that you see laying there on the table. Um, and that's what I'm gonna use for the brim of his hat. But you could use a one gallon stir stick as well. This is just stuff I had kind of handy that I thought I would use. So as you can see there, I'm just laying it out and then I'm just gonna hot glue that right on over those little um, openings from the paint sticks. Then I took my Waverly chalk paint and the color plaster. I was at the end of my bottle as you can see it upside down there trying to get as much out as I can. <laughs> and I am painting that whole face with that plaster color. Then I took my Apple Barrel um, Burnt Umber and I paint the hat and the brim with that color. Then I decided that face was too white because you know, scarecrows are usually dirty. So I took that wax and a baby wipe and I am just wiping it all around the face and I am gonna smear it with the clean part of my baby wipe just to kind of smear it all together. Then I took my Waverly chalk paint and the color cashew and I am going to do some dry brushing all around the brim of that hat. And then I will do it also on the edge of the hat and on the inside of both. I did have a subscriber comment that it just really brought it to life when I did this. And I just have to agree, this just, it just amazes me sometimes what a little distressing will do to your um, project. Then once that was all done, I took this saying, it says, Happy Fall, y'all, that I printed. Now, I love this saying. I love the font that I used, and I'm sorry I don't remember what it was, but it was a booger to weed. It has a lot of little lines in it, and it took forever to weed it. And then here, if you can see on my finger, I have the H on my finger because it was not wanting to stick to my transfer tape. So I figured, well, I'll just put on my finger and stick it on there as soon as I get all of this on and it works I got it on there and got every all the pieces that came to it on there but um, yeah as much as I love this font it, it wasn't very fun to work with <laughs> but you know I guess that's kind of the price you pay for something very pretty right I don't know uh, whatever it's kind of like when you have to put makeup on every day <laughs> anyways okay so here I have talked about this before I am NOT a drawer and I was really nervous to do this part but I practiced on a piece of paper and I used a pencil and I sketched out a scarecrow face and I think it came out so cute and I thank you guys all of you who uh, told me I can draw I can draw when it's uh, this simple I guess but <laughs> <laughs> but anyways I am practicing practice makes perfect right so here I'm just making a uh, triangle for the nose and then I just make a wavy line for the smile
And I did use my Arteza um, paint sticks. I will try and remember to put a link for them in my description box. Um, for those of you that don't know, I normally do put a, um, all the products that I use for my DIYs in the description box. And if I've ordered them, I try to remember to put the links there too. I usually do, most of the time. <laughs> Majority of the time, I should say. So right there, I was painting the top part of that nose white. Um, and then here I'm gonna do orange, and then on the bottom I'm gonna do yellow to make it look like a candy corn. Then I'm going to hot glue that sunflower that I got from the Dollar Tree right up there on the corner, right above the brim of the hat. Then I'm going to take a leaf that I got from the Dollar Tree. I just felt like it needed a, something more, so I'm just gonna clip off the bottom part of that. And I'm gonna stick that and hot glue that in right behind where that sunflower is as well. Then after that, I took some burlap ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to hot glue a small little square right up there on the hat. Cause you know, every, every uh, scarecrow's gotta have a patch somewhere, right? <laughs> then I realized, oh, I wanted to put some stitch marks on his nose and mouth. So I'm taking my uh, black Arteza marker, paint marker, and I'm just adding a few stitch marks on the nose and down along the mouth. Oh, he's so cute. Then I took another one of those and I'm just pulling out each uh, string from that burlap and that kind of gives it more of that um, rugged, worn look. And then I just put that patch there on the bottom. Then I am taking my hot glue, I'm putting it along the rim of that hat and I am just hot gluing some raffia that I cut up um, right there in place. And then I trim it down because it was a little too long and then I thought, oh, this would be perfect for his bangs. So I'm just going to add some more hot glue there and push them into that hot glue so that it sticks. And you guys, this day, I don't know what it was, but I had so many hot glue strings everywhere. It was driving me nuts. So then I just took some rope from that I uh, got from uh, Walmart and I tied knots on the end and then I am hot gluing that down on the back to use as a hanger. Then I think after that I take some pieces of ribbon that I had, yeah, and I'm just going to hot glue it over those knots just to kind of give it some extra support. Although this sign is very light, it probably didn't need it, but I had them laying around and I thought what why not? I'm probably not going to use it for anything else. <laughs> and there it is. I just love it. I hope you do. I know a lot of you really liked it. Um, so let me know what you think in the comment box below. Okay, here is DIY number four. Yep, number four. <laughs> I started off with those flowers. Um, some of them are from Dollar Tree. Some of them I ordered from Amazon and I think some are from Walmart. Some uh, flower foam, uh, some ribbons, that I, and some of those hoops from Dollar Tree. So, like I said on my first video, I've seen other people do this, where they, other creators, where they hot glue that uh, foam, the flower foam um, to the hoops, but obviously I didn't do it right. And um, I've seen them use the wire to kind of help connect it. Well, this didn't work too well. As you can see, I'm gonna lift up the hoop and it's going to roll on me. Yep, see, there it goes. <laughs> So I just took a little hot glue and because you don't want to do too much, you don't want to um, 
it to eat away at that foam. But I did finally get it to stick. So then I'm taking this lamb's ear that I got from Walmart and I am just sticking it into that foam. And I have to tell you, I'm in love with lamb's ear. I just think it is so beautiful and so soft and I just love it. And then I just put a little dab there of hot glue on the wire and I'm just gluing a little bit of the leaf on there. And one of the things I love about these leaves is they turn so easy. Um, you can just twist them and they turn to face the direction you want them to turn. Then I just go in and I put another one on the other side and I do the exact same thing that I did on the first one. Then I took these uh, peonies that I got from Dollar Tree and I am just sticking them into the foam, just kind of layering them around where I felt they looked good. Then I took these, I, oh, maybe these aren't from Amazon. Um, I think these, oh man, I don't remember where I got these. Um, I can't remember if these are from Dollar Tree or Amazon or Walmart. Sorry guys, I'll have to try and check the, the original video and see. And then I got these leaves. Now these are eucalyptus leaves that I found at Walmart and I am in love with these. These are so beautiful and I've been using them in a lot of projects. But I'm just sticking them all around as well. And I honestly guys, I have this hanging up on my laundry room door and I every time I walk by it, the colors together are just stunning and I just absolutely love this wreath. So then I took this ribbon, I got this ribbon um, from Amazon. I am just making my original, my, my usual bow that I always make, I, my go-to bow. And I'm going to make this, I think I make it a three layer bow. So I'm just doing a twist to that one. And then um, I'm going to add that burlap bow with the lace on it. I got that from the Dollar Tree. And then I think I just you I add um, just the plain orange, kind of a burnt orange color ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree as well in the middle. So there you see how I did that. Then after that, I decided to make a little hanger with some of that orange ribbon. And I'm just kind of hot gluing the ends together. And then I do glue the back down um, around the... Uh, I think I glued it to the back of the bow, actually. I'm just tying that bow on, and then I'm going to, yeah, hot glue that to the back of the bow and the, the um, wreath form as well. And there it is. I took one more of those leaves and I put it right in the middle of the bow, and that is that. I love this wreath. It is so stunning and so beautiful. The colors are amazing together. Let me know what you think about this wreath. Okay, DIY number five. This is another one that I have those colors together that are just amazing. So. I took this pumpkin sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. I am removing that leaf and that uh, raffia bow. I don't know if you noticed, but that raffia bow was on there upside down. <laughs> oh, Dollar Tree. Oh, what do you, what do you, you know, that's a dollar. I guess you can't expect perfection sometimes. And once I get that off, then I'm going to also take off that hanger and I'm picking off the glue there. Um, I think I also sand off the, uh, the glitter as well that was on the front. So I turn it around and I'm going to paint it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color. Mm, what was that? I think that's mineral, I think is the color. And I will give it a good coat of paint. And then once that was done, I also painted this little crate that I also got from the Dollar Tree with that same color. Then I decided to paint these little half beads. I got those off of the Amazon. And I do the same with those and with the words. 
Now I'm taking my Waverly Chalk paint in the color Cashew and I'm just going to dry brush on those, um, or dry brush all over that pumpkin. Then I'm going to also make the, what, like the moon shape ridges that you do on a pumpkin, just like that, right in the middle there. And then I'm just taking some of that gray with that same brush and just kind of going over those lines and distressing as well, just kind of mixing in those tones all together. Then I decide to go around the edge as well. That kind of helps make it look more like a pumpkin. Just kind of outlining and, and detailing all those little pieces there. And then I'm going to do the same to that um, crate as well. And I didn't remember showing you guys all this painting. I'm sorry, I hope you're not too bored. Then once that was all dry, I took my hot glue gun and I am gluing that crate right to the bottom, making sure the edges all are all together so it will stand correctly. Then I take those little half beads and I am just going to um, put them all along the edge of that pumpkin. And I think I did some, it looks like I did some dry brushing on those half beads as well and on the words. And I'm using that hot glue and I'm just going to put the um, words that says give thanks right there on the middle. This would be a great Thanksgiving project as well. Then I added some floral foam. Oh my goodness, I was having a hard time saying that. And I'm just adding a little bit of hot glue there just so that it stays in that basket. Then I'm taking some more of these peonies that I got. Um, and oh yeah these are from amazon that's right i did get those from amazon i ordered them specifically for this uh challenge that we were having because i knew it was going to be on peonies and i didn't have any that were fall colors so i'm just laying these in that basket or in that crate and i'm adding just some leaves some of that eucalyptus um, leaves and some of the lamb's ear as well and then i added some little pumpkins from the dollar tree and then i took this orange uh, gingham ribbon that I got earlier this year from the Dollar Tree. I just made a small little bow with it and as soon as I'm done fluffing it <laughs> I'm gonna hot glue that right there under the stem of that pumpkin. And of course gotta angle those edges. <clears throat> And then um, I didn't want it to cover the words, so I just kind of put a dab of hot glue on there so that it would stay open. Then I decided I wanted that same ribbon around that crate, so if you want to recreate this, you might want to do this part before you fill it with flowers. But I am just uh, wrapping some of that ribbon around the middle of that crate and then hot gluing the ends in place. And there it is, and I think it's beautiful. Again, all those colors are just stunning together. And yeah, I love it. It's one of my favorite. It looks pretty high in it, in my opinion. You'll have to let me know what you think about this one. Okay, he's DIY number six. 
This is the topiary I created. I used three of these carvable pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. I used some rope from Walmart. I used um, some sweater I cut up, some denim I cut up, and some faux leather uh, that I had got from Dollar Tree. So I start off by taking those stems off of the pumpkins and then I'm cutting a hole in the middle of the top and of the bottom of those pumpkins. Now these pumpkins are just made out of styrofoam so they're really easy. Once you cut it, you just push and it goes right on through. And it's super easy. So you see I'm gonna do the bottom of that and I do that to all three of those pumpkins. Once I had them all done, I, start, I took the strips of leather that I had cut out and I want to say they were only like two or three inches wide, I'm not for sure, I don't remember. And I'm doing some hot glue, I just put a little dab of hot glue on the top, I tuck the end into the edge and then I'm just going to wrap it um, vertically along that pumpkin and I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom as well. I did make them a little long so you'll see um, I do end up trimming it some some of those edges because they were um, a little too long. And I just go around and do that all around the pumpkin um, trying to make sure that the edges overlap each other so you, that you don't see any of that orange pumpkin. So yeah, see I realized that okay these these ends are too long, I need to trim them. <laughs> okay, and there it is. And you can see there's some gaps there or the way it was laying. I wasn't happy with that. So I'll show you what I do with that here in just a little bit. But I went around with the, the other pumpkins and added the sweater and the denim. And then I just go around on this one and I add some of that lace ribbon all around uh, my pumpkin. Now the story behind this, I shared this on the first video, is I when I think of fall and pumpkin patches, I think of all the times I spent with my grandsons at the pumpkin patch. Sorry. And um, the leather represents the boots I'd wear, the denim represents the jeans that I would wear and the sweater represents of course the sweater I would wear and uh, those are very special times for me and I'm crying just because we're like 2,000 miles away from them now and I miss them dearly so this project means a lot because it brings back all those memories that I love so once I had those pumpkins all done I added some faux leather to the sweater. I added some jute twine to the denim. And uh, sorry guys, I'm just a little crazy here. But um, I decided that pale needed something a little bit more to dress it up. So I added some burlap around it and then I'm just adding some leaves around there. And then I am hot gluing them to the bottom, starting with, of course, the faux leather on the bottom for the boots, <laughs> um, the denim, and then the sweater. And then as you can see, I did have a stick that I ordered from Amazon. Yes, I said I ordered sticks from Amazon. Um, and I, I hot glued it to the top. And I laugh at myself for that, guys, just because I grew up most of my life in the Pacific Northwest. And I'm just used to being able to go outside and pick up pine cones or sticks and leaves and um, here where we live now in the south, it's not as easy to find. <laughs> okay, so once I get all of those little details on there it was kind of hard to show this because it's, it was tall and so close to my camera but I do add uh, a leaf or two to the top just to kind of give it a little more detail and I think that that's really all there was um, yeah I'm gonna add a little bit there laying it down And 
And I think that's it. <laughs> Maybe not. No, I forgot. Okay, so yeah, I made a bow out of raffia. And then these little pumpkins, um, I got them from Hobby Lobby as well. They came in a little bag of pumpkins, and I just glued it in the middle because I felt like, you know, it needed a bow. You know me, I'm a little extra. I like the extra stuff, so I just added that bow to it. And there it is, and it is so cute. And like I said, it means a lot to me because it just brings back all those special fun memories of me taking my grandsons and now they're you know preteen and teens and um yeah that those were fun times okay here is diy number seven i love this wreath it is so beautiful guys okay so i started off with a whole bunch of this wheat that i got from um, dollar tree some of those pomegranate berries um this wheat <laughs> wreath form ah from Dollar Tree and then this ribbon I got from Michaels after Christmas it was like 75% off when I got it so I'm just taking it and I am um, starting off by hot gluing um, it I wrapped it around that frame and hot glued it together I hope that makes sense and sorry this isn't in frame but once I did that I just took that uh, ribbon and I am just wrapping the whole frame with that ribbon so that you don't see the frame <clears throat> and what makes nice about doing it this way too is that it actually kind of made little pockets to where it helped when I was hot gluing the flowers in I could just hot glue them or the leaves whatever the wheat I could just hot glue them into those pockets <clears throat> so there I just uh, took the edge of the end and folded it together to make a nice clean finish and just hot glued it and then I just took some wheat and some of this beautiful eucalyptus leaves from uh, Walmart and I'm like laying them kind of out where I want them I'm just placing them here and there alternating the color of the wheat um, and then I'm just laying them where I want them and actually I don't use hot glue I forgot I did use that um, floral wire so I was laying them where I wanted them and then I was just poking that floral wire around them and through the ribbon because it pokes through the ribbon really easily and then I um, just twisted the the ribbon in the back but you could definitely hot glue it if you wanted to as well and there it is and then I added some of those pomegranate berries to the bottom now I also made a bow that I did not show you I will link a video that I watched to make it because I really still have to get better at making my bows guys then I took this welcome sign that I got from uh, Dollar Tree. It comes in a three pack. No, this one came by itself. Um, it's kind of a new sign that I've seen. And I painted it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color orange. No, yeah, what's it? Pumpkin, it's called pumpkin. <laughs> and then after that, I just took my uh, Waverly wax and I am dry brushing all along the edge and just kind of even over the letters a little bit too just gives it that little rustic um, farmhouse look and the reason why guys I didn't use the hot glue on my um, when I was adding the the florals to the wreath is because our weather our temperature is still at 90 degrees and I didn't want it to melt because it's gonna be you know hanging on my front door so then I'm just using here some more wire I'm putting it through um, the little hole there on the E and I'm just poking it through the ribbon and then tying it in the back and I just I think this wreath came out stunning it is just beautiful I saw when I saw that wheat at Dollar Tree I thought it was so pretty and I knew I wanted to do something with it and I've had this in mind I don't know for a few weeks before I did it and I it came out more beautiful than I thought it would Okay, DIY number eight. We are getting really close to the end here. Guys, thank you for hanging in there with me. Um, this is a hypo, hippo product. If you haven't seen that or heard about that, um, 
I will have a link to each one of the videos that these projects came from. Um, check it out. This paper is amazing. Um, so uh, basically you just get a printable, which is a free printable that I got off of Google. And I printed it on this paper. I spray it three times with a clear coat to protect the ink. And then once I have it all trimmed down to fit, I stick it in water for about 30 to 60 seconds. And then once it is done, you take it out of the water. And I forgot to do this, but this is very important. You're supposed to water the, the item you're putting it on as well. But here I'm just pulling the top and you gotta be real gentle. And once you have a little bit of that clear part sticking, you hold it down and pull the back off, just like I did there. And I, there was a little bit of a wrinkle, so I'm trying to get it with my finger here, and instead I get my little Cricut weeding tool and just lightly pull it up, and I was able to get that wrinkle out. And then you just smooth out the water with your finger, just kind of smooth it all out, brush away the water, and then you use a paper towel to just dab it a little dry and then you just let it dry uh, for a little bit um, I don't remember how long I let this dry but I want to say it, at least a good half hour maybe a little longer the paper comes with the perfect instructions that are so easy to follow so then while that was drying I took this little crate from Dollar Tree and my uh, Waverly wax in the color moss and I paint that uh, crate with that color then um, I took this paper, I got this paper from a book I bought at Michael's. It was uh, buy one book, get two free. And that's the book I got it from. And that is such a great deal, guys. If you ever see that, I'd hit it because it's, it's a great deal. I mean, normally they cost $20 a book. So really you're getting three books for $20. That's, that's really a good deal. So I took my, um, glue stick there and I am just uh, putting glue all over it. and you know what I just realized I don't think I showed you guys that I took a cutting board and I painted it with my Waverly chalk paint and the color um, cashew and that cutting board I got from the Dollar Tree as well and then that's what I laid my decal on and then here I am putting the paper right along the sides. Now, as I told the story on the, the first time I showed this on the first video, I wasn't sure after I got this decal on that I was gonna like it. And if you can see those marks on the edge, I was gonna paint little strips, but the, the painter's tape that I was laying down to make stripes was pulling up the tape. So that's why I decided on this paper. The minute I saw this paper, I knew this was going to work and I absolutely love how this came out. I think this paper with that color, of, um, the, the cashew color paint and that decal are just perfect together. So once I got those this paper on the sides, I, put, I hot glued that crate to the front and then I'm just adding some more of that paper along the front and the sides of that crate. Um, then I took this burlap trim that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to hot glue that down into the middle of that crate as well, just in the middle of that paper. And oh my gosh, you guys, every time I look at this, I just, it makes my eyes happy and my heart happy. I just think it just is so beautiful the way it came out. I absolutely love this. I did another project recently too, you might have seen it, um, a little, I think it's the house. Um, no, it's another project. It's the little wooden jar that I used this paper on too. I just love it, I think it's beautiful. And then I added some more of that trim um, to the edge where that paper is. Um, where the, it meets the cutting board. And I did that on both sides. Then I'm making a floppy bow, I think you call it. <laughs> and I just took a whole bunch of different ribbons that I had that I thought the colors would mix well. And I am just layering them all in an X. Now, um, I don't think I dovetailed them but if you want to dovetail them it's probably better to do that before you start laying them out 
um, I can't tell. I'm trying to tell if I did or not. I might have. Um, it just makes it easier if you can do them all together or all before you put them together. But you don't even have to dovetail. If you don't want to dovetail, you don't have to dovetail. Make it your own. And remember, you can follow me at Rustic and Lace DIY on Facebook and Instagram. And then I am going to add some raffia to the back of that. And then I take some twine that I had and I'm just tying a knot um, to tie them all together and just tie it really tight. And then I trim that raffia and you have a cute little floppy bow. And then I am just going to hot glue that on to the top part of that sign to cover up the the handles and yeah no I didn't <laughs> see this is where I realized oh I didn't uh, dovetail them so I went around and dovetailed them all and then I hot glued it to cover that opening then I'm just taking one of those little pumpkins from Dollar no from Hobby Lobby and glued it in the middle of that then I took some of this corn that I got from uh, Dollar Tree and I just I had filled that crate with some raffia and um, I just added the corn and a pumpkin that I got from Dollar Tree to that basket. Now I'm just making like a finger bow. I don't know if it's really called a finger bow, but you just I just wrapped some twine around my hand about, I don't know, 15 times or so. And then I'm just tie, tying another piece of twine right in the middle of it. And there you have a cute little messy bow. Um, and I, I love these bows, they, they make it look just really rustic or farmhouse, whichever you'd like to say. Then I just hot glued that onto the front of that crate right in the middle there. And then I think once that done is done, that might be the end of this one. Yep, there it is. Let me know what you think about that in the comment box. I love it. It's one of my favorites. And I think it looks like something you'd buy at a store. Okay, DIY number nine, we're almost there, guys. This one is my ultimate favorite out of all the projects I have created for fall. This is my all-time favorite. So I bought that pumpkin at Walmart. It was like $5.97. I painted it with my Waverly chalk paint and the color plaster. And then I took this image that I printed off of Google. I just did um, fall free fall printables and I found this truck. And I told this story, I'll tell it again. I saw at the beginning of the fall at Hobby Lobby, they have these pumpkins that have these beautiful painted uh, sceneries on them. And they're like 50 bucks. On sale, it's like 30 something. And there's no way I'm gonna pay that much for a pumpkin. So I've been wanting to do something on a pumpkin and I've been looking for like napkins because I thought I could decoupage a napkin on. But when I got this paper and I thought, I wonder if this will work on a pumpkin because it says it will work on pretty much anything. So I printed out this um, picture. I am putting water, I'm doing it correctly this time, on my pumpkin after I let that paper set for about 30 to 60 seconds. I just slowly push it up and then I get the clear part. You can see it just a little bit there and hold it down and then I pull the back off very gently. Now, since this is round, and since there's crevices on that pumpkin, it didn't lay flat, of course, it did take a little bit of work, but I just real gently picked it up because it is movable. Um, so I'm just being really careful to kind of um, put it in place let, and getting the wrinkles out. And you guys, I, uh, Adore this pumpkin it comes out so beautiful so here I'm just working at making sure all the the little um, 
wrinkles are out right there. I think it was a little dry, so I just add a little bit more water to it. And uh, I, I, I was like this when I first did it. I just kept saying how much I love this. Um, and I will say it again. I absolutely love this pumpkin. It is just so beautiful in my opinion. <laughs> So once I get this all on and get all the wrinkles out, I of course wipe off the water and then I get a paper towel. Now when I was drying it, I was noticing some of the paint, and I don't know if it was part of the picture because I didn't notice it before, but it kind of looked like it was um, wearing or coming off a little bit, but I don't mind that because it makes it look more rustic. And I just love this. So if you're gonna try any of this paper, if you have a pumpkin, now try it. And the reason why I bought this pumpkin at Walmart is because it is bigger than the um, pumpkins at Dollar Tree. Um, but I just love it. So I used my Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle there to color the stem. Then I am just taking some of those solo wood flowers and I'm hot gluing them as well as some leaves around that stem. And that's all I did to this one. Um, I do add a little bow. Uh, the buffalo check bow um, at the end as well but like I said guys this this project was so beautiful in fact I think I have another pumpkin from Walmart I'm thinking hmm maybe I need to make <laughs> another one um, because yeah it's I just love the way this came out oh just gorgeous let me know what you think about this. I know many of you in the past um, commented that you really liked this pumpkin as well. Okay, for the final project. Now this was my inspiration for this. I got this at Hobby Lobby. I got these pictures from the Dollar Tree. I'm just taking off the, um, the leaves that were on there. And when I meant I got this from Dollar or Hobby Lobby, I meant the inspiration from Hobby Lobby, not the items. So once I had those on, I am taking the um, hangers off because they had them stapled on. So I'm just using my staple remover to take those hangers off. Then I'm going to use my miter shears and I am taking uh, paint stir sticks. I think those are the five gallons and I am just um, making corner edges on those uh, miter shears so that they um, connect at the top there and this you know this took a little bit of work of figuring out the right angles um, measuring them out you can see I'm lining it up but then I realized it really wasn't straight so I had to go back again and line them back up again and measure it out again but it in the end I got it to work so I'm just trimming those boards, uh, that board. Sorry you hear Oliver, he's getting all crazy out there with my husband. Um, <laughs> I am outlining the um, that board and cutting it with my box cutter. Then I am just marking here and I'm gonna cut these uh, stir sticks down some more so that they're just barely overhanging the edge of that. And then after that, I had all of those pieces cut with that magic of a snap of a finger. <laughs> I wish it was that fast and easy. I am going to paint this with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And then I take those pieces and I color, I paint them in my color, um, oh my gosh, what's that color? Hazelnut. <laughs> I colored those small pieces and the words autumn in hazelnut. And then once they were dry, I took a baby wipe and my antique wax and I am just going around the edge with that antique wax and um, I'm just kind of smearing it and then wiping it off a little bit with my baby wipe just to kind of outline it and give it a little more definition and I think I had some of that towards the middle of it too so that's what those pieces all look like so I'm taking my wood glue here and I am going to glue 
all of those pieces together. So it's just going to kind of look like a barn at the top of that uh, piece there. And I got a little too much wood glue there, so <laughs> I'm just trying to transfer it on to the other one. I think I also used some hot glue too. Let's see. Yeah. So I use wood glue for a permanent hold and hot glue for immediate hold. And I'm just going to glue those in place. Now when I cut these, I had to kind of lay them out like I wanted them so I didn't mix those pieces up. And I think I got them right. So that's what it looked like afterwards. So the rest of this, um, that square with the X, I created that off of um, Cricut Design Space and then I created the word hello off of Cricut as well. Then I'm just connecting them together on the bottom just like that and I'm using my jumbo uh, craft sticks to hot glue them to the back and then I think I do go in and put some more in the back just up and down just to kind of give it to help it be a little more sturdy. And here I'm just measuring out the distance between the letters and then I am hot gluing them in place. And then I am taking some hot glue there and I am just covering the back with some shipping paper so that you don't see all that back stuff because it's not going to hang. I'm going to have this, uh, I do have this standing up um, next to my back door. So I wanted to make sure that the back of this piece looked finished. And once I got it all glued, I trimmed it down and there it is. Oh, I wrapped some twine around the bottom of it as well. And I think it came out looking really cute, much cheaper than the one at Hobby Lobby. So you'll have to let me know what you think of this as well. The one at Hobby Lobby was $39.99 and I paid less than $10 for this. Okay guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. I just wanted to say thank you again for watching. Thank you for your support. If you haven't already and you liked what you see, hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. And make sure you give me that thumbs up and comment in the box. That really does help my channel grow. I will be back next week. I don't believe it will be Wednesday. I have a couple of collaborations next week starting on Tuesday. So have those notification bells set and I will see you all then. And until then, all of you guys have a wonderful and blessed week and we will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.